Okay, so as you can see, the bench is a mess, and that is because DJI have just dropped a beta firmware that brings Vision 1 FPV support to the Goggles 2. I have it, I've been testing it for the last two hours, and whilst everyone is jumping around with joy, I'm going to be the party pooper a little bit and just tell you about a few things that you need to be aware of. Now, just to be clear, DJI have dropped a new firmware for the Goggles 2, which is a beta. The public can't get it. It is only being given to beta access that brings support for the original uh, ear units, i.e. the Vista or the DJI FPV ear unit on the Goggles 2. It binds, it connects, it works in every way you would expect, including bringing canvas mode support to the DJI ear unit. Yes, I have said that and it is correct. The beta firmware that you have to install on the Goggles 2 and the ear unit brings proper canvas mode to the DJI previous ear units, giving you that full functionality that you've seen on the O3 ear unit that is hanging around over there. It very much looks and feels like the O3 system. It now brings the option for high and low bit rate. So you can set it between high and low latency, I mean, not high and low bit rate. You can do the bit rate setting separately, but you can now choose high and low latency settings, which you can't do on O3. What is interesting though, is it very much brings the DJI ear unit into the same sort of settings capability as O3. So for instance, it now has the three modes for transmission. It has 40 megahertz, which is 50 megabits. It has 20 megahertz, which is 25 megabits and 10 megahertz, which is 15 megabits. That is now on here as well. The overall camera settings and everything are all there, very much like it was on O3. However, Whilst all that sounds fantastic, there are some downsides as well. The first is, at this point in time, if you update the firmware on the O3, sorry, on the original ear unit, I'm used to saying O3 with these goggles, they will no longer bind to the V1s or the V2s. Now that is probably because those goggles are going to need an update as well. The V2s are almost certainly going to have that update. The question is though, is DJI going to bring that update for the V1 goggles or is this going to be a line in the sand for the V1 goggles where if you update you can only use it with the V2s and the goggles too but if you don't update you can continue to use them with the V2s and the goggles one we will have to find out in the future secondly there are no power output options just like on O3 that I can see in this as well which means you can't select the output power but worse than that none of the hacks work for additional power. NACO does not work, NACO underscore power does not work, and the ham file, whilst it gives you more channels, does not increase the RF power output either. Further to that, in my testing, it seems that with the public firmware that DJI have released on the O3 goggles, they have also stop the increased output with the ham file on the O3 ear unit as well. Whilst I have a video talking about the FCC hack that was done, I thought, on public firmware, but I actually think I filmed it on the pre-release before the public firmware went out. And having gone back and looked over it, DJI on both the Goggles 2 and the Vision 2 seem to have changed it that on the O3 ear unit, the ham file no longer increases the output to an extremely high level. It is much lower. Now, that ham file still works on the Avata, and I've tested it, and it still works absolutely fine, but it isn't doing what it did on the O3, unfortunately. So, here and now today, yes, DJI have brought backwards compatibility in testing to the Goggles 2, but it isn't perfect. No power options, no FCC hacks, no 1200 milliwatt hacks, and it is going to stop using it with the Goggles 1 and 2. So if you do have access to this, be aware of that. I'm not saying all of this will be the same in the future. Right now it's early days. You need to take that into account. This is testing firmware, frankly, most of us probably shouldn't have our hands on it, but we do. So that 
is the situation here and now. I will obviously make a proper video on this in the future. I've literally spent the last two hours testing everything I could do on this. Whilst I remember in this test firmware, none of the remote controllers bind to it either with these air units. The black remote won't bind, nor will the DJI FPV remote version 2 probably because they need a firmware update as well, but there isn't one available as of now. We don't know what the remote capabilities or functions will be in the future either. Anyway, that's it. That's the situation. Everyone can calm down. Yes, it's nice. Yes, it's cool. However, let's wait and see for what the actual situation is when it lands, because as always with GGI, we can never have our own way. There is always a compromise and I suspect the FPV team that's doing the work today probably isn't as keen on some of the things that we've had in the past like the FCC hacks as we are and the chances are we may not get exactly what we want and there will be compromises here and there. Anyway that's it for me stay safe I'll speak to you soon.